Speaker. I call Denise Roach. Tinakwe, Mr. Speaker. Tinako to Katoa. Inga mate, haere, haere, hokia, tura, kite po. Inga mana, inga reo, rauranga tirama. Tinako to, tinako to, tinako to Katoa. Mr. Speaker, when I stand in this House to speak on the final reading of a treaty bill, I'm always very aware that with the passage of this bill today, history is being made. Today is the culmination of years and years of work. That work includes the fight for recognition as an iwi, so that uh, Ngāti Kōraki Kahukura could negotiate with the Crown, the setting up of various settlement trusts and post-settlement trusts, the engagement with and the voting of the iwi members themselves, and then, of course, more recently, the renegotiations uh, with the Crown uh, around some of the public unease about the settlement deed itself. That process, sir, was predated by decades and decades of pressure from subsequent generations dating back to the first native land court cases in the mid-1860s and the Iwi's attempt to oppose the alienation that they had from their land. I want to acknowledge that work, all that work. I want to acknowledge the incredible persistence that's been needed to continue the fight against the injustices of the past and seek the redress for the wrongs done by the Crown, when at times it must have felt quite hopeless. It's clear, sir, from even a cursory reading of the settlement bill that grave wrongs were perpetuated against this iwi, starting with the land grabs in the 1850s, leading on to the confiscation of land after the Waikato Land Wars in 1863 and 1864, even though Ngāti Kuruki Kahukura's rangatira Te Ori Ori worked with the Crown for peace. And the actions of the Crown in the 1860s and onwards into the early 20th century that broke the collective ownership of Ngāti Kōraki Kahukura's land into smaller parcels that enabled the people to be alienated from, uh, from the land. Because we all know that divide and conquer is a sure me method to break down the strength of the collective. The acknowledgement of the past and the bill outlined in the process of alienation. It outlines the process of that alienation in detail. And at the start of the summary of the historical account, it says, and I'm going to quote from it, and number one, it says, during the 1840s and 1850s, Ngāti Kōraki Kahukura were a prosperous and flourishing people. Among other things, they successfully traded with Europeans. However, by the late 1850s, there was rising tension over land alienations. Later in the same section, under number four, it says, the combined impact of confiscation and the alienation of land for which the native land court had awarded titles to individuals resulted in Ngāti Kōraki Kahukura becoming virtually landless by the end of the 20th century. And then that impact is also outlined further on in the deed and in the bill, where it says, by 1950, many Ngāti Kōraki Kahukura were migrating from their traditional rohe in search of better economic prospects. This disconnected many from their communities and local culture. Ngāti Kōraki Kahukura consider that landlessness and social deprivation have contributed to the Crown not recognising them as an iwi in their own right. Mr Speaker, this settlement bill offers financial and commercial redress of around $3 million, cultural redress amounting to around $3.23 million. Ngāti Kōraki Kahukua went from having their own resources and land, having their own economic base to virtual landlessness, and along the way, they suffered the loss of their landscape, their language, the loss of their wahi tapu, the flooding of some of their sacred places uh, for hydroelectric dams. And 100 years ago, at the start of World War I, some of their people were arrested for resisting fighting in that war. Their relationship with their awa, to Waikato and with their sacred maunga, maunga tautere, has been damaged and they have, they've had difficulty accessing those sacred, sacred places, sir. So this bill addresses just a tiny fraction 
of what Ngāti Kōraki Kahu could have endured. And yet there are some New Zealanders who have no understanding of the history and who will declare this treaty settlement and all treaty settlements as a gravy train. And my response to that is to remind those people that in 2010 this government bailed out Southern Canterbury Finance to the tune of $1.7 billion. This settlement, sir, is a drop in the bucket. And those people didn't lose their land. Among those who have little understanding, sir, about the history of this nation was the Prime Minister and his statement quite recently where he said that New Zealand was colonised peacefully and that Māori are grateful to this capital that the settlers bring to New Zealand. Ignorance, sir, is not bliss. Ignorance in these cases compounds the injuries that iwi have suffered over generations. The rosy 1950s myth of New Zealand as a leader in race relations is completely unfounded and needs to be debunked. And having the leader of our country perpetuate that rubbish is insulting in the extreme. There is no way any iwi, certainly not this iwi, would affirm that colonisation was a peaceful process. And I asked the Treaty Minister to take his leader in hand and show him a treaty bill. Mr Speaker, I recognise though that today is a day for Ngāti Kōraki Kahukura to celebrate. And having said that, I am compelled to state for the record the Greens' position. We will be supporting this bill, but we need to state that we don't believe these are full and final settlements. We remain deeply uneasy. Oh. We remain deeply uneasy that the Crown picks the winners and losers. It can pit Māori against Māori, iwi against iwi, hapu against hapu, and we fear that in doing so they create more treaty breaches, sir. The Greens don't believe that it's full compensation, and we must acknowledge the generosity of this iwi who will accept this settlement, and also that they will work alongside other iwi the community, the councils, uh, to safeguard and protect the sacred, their sacred places, Waikato and Mongatau today, and that all people of New Zealand benefit from that generosity, sir. Nor do we believe that it's a final settlement. These are historical claims that suggest that, the, that, and it suggests that the past is done with, and it's not. We cannot know what impact the past actions will have on future generations. We do understand that this settlement gives Ngāti Kōraki Kuhukura a start, an economic base that we can use to secure a better opportunities for your people, a solid place to step forward into the future. And I want to acknowledge, sir, the treaty negotiation teams of both the iwi and the Crown for the work that they've done to bring this settlement to the House today. Sir, I want to finish with the, the last paragraph in the apology that's contained in the deed of settlement and in the bill itself. And it says, Ngāti Kōraki Kahukura have a long tradition of seeking a positive relationship with the Crown. And the Crown looks forward to renewing that tradition and building an enduring association of mutual trust and cooperation with Ngāti Kōraki Kahukura that is based on respect for Te Tiriti o Waitangi and its principles. We too have hope for a New Zealand where the Crown abides by the Treaty of Waitangi Sur. The children and grandchildren of Ngāti Kōraki Kahukura, Kura, Kahukura depend on that respect, as do all our children, sir. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa.